You are gay. Sometimes you edit for clients and wonder how they got so popular. <laughs> and now I'm an atheist. <laughs> you have a lot of neurodivergent energy. Um, okay. So I've actually like never really talked about this and ooh, someone said you want more surgery. Um, I assume you do not know what your sexuality is. Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Kaylee, how's it going? I'm great, thanks for asking. So for today's video, I thought I would do a sit down video because I haven't done one of those in a while. I think it's actually been a really long time since I've like actually just sat down, checked in, how's your gang, you know, this shit. I am going to be answering your assumptions. So I asked you guys on a Google search. Oh, can we just talk about my new glasses though? Yes, Harry Potter, yes. I saw this TikTok that was like mimicking Voldemort and it was so funny. <laughs> this is very much out of my comfort zone. As you guys know, I don't really make videos like this. So let's just get started. I have all the assumptions right here. Instead of asking you guys on my socials, I send out a Google survey so they're anonymous. So we can like really get into it, you know? Okay, so let's just get right into it. Someone said your parents are tired of you constantly moving back in. So actually that is false. My parents love that I'm here. They love my presence. I... I'm a very great person. That's actually quite the opposite. They hate when I'm not home. I think it's just like a foreign parent thing or I don't know. You are extremely self-conscious about your body even though you're beautiful in every way. Well, first of all, thank you. As the years have gone on and I've really started to become self-aware of my body image issues. I have been very intentional about saying nice things to my body and trying my hardest to appreciate my body. Everyone has bad days. I was actually thinking about this a few nights ago. It's like you lose absolutely nothing by thinking your body is the hottest thing to ever walk this planet. So why not just think that? And so some days, well, most days really, I'm like, but I gotta go on. on. I'm that bitch. Just who cares? Even if you don't even think it yourself, who cares? No one else is hotter than me. Thank you. <laughs> there are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot in here about um, my dying channel. So that is very sweet. <laughs> Someone says, I have this theory that you work for some of the biggest YouTubers and just don't say anything about it. Like Emma Chamberlain and James Charles. Uh, that is false, I do not work for them, but I do work for some other pretty great YouTubers. If you don't know, I'm a video editor for some creators. Not that this needs like announcing or anything, but like the last year and a half, there was like no way that I could upload a lot and also edit a lot of videos. Like you have to give and take in certain areas of your work life. And now that I'm home and I don't have rent to pay, I'm definitely starting to try to get away. Not like get away, like I will take a job if someone asks me to. And it's like, I always am accepting clients and I always love getting money. No, I'm really trying to focus on my own craft. But yeah, I do work for some pretty great YouTubers though. Um, they're very, they're very big. <laughs> yeah, YouTubers are very, very big. Lots of, mo lots of money, lots of, lots of numbers. The numbers are big. You are aggravated at the fact that you are not famous at this point. Well, I'm famous in my head, thank you. I get a lot of comments saying, oh my God, you're you're so underrated, like you should have a million subscribers, blah, blah, blah. And that truly, part of it is my fault. Like obviously the YouTube algorithm, I think is very biased and has a very, I mean, not to talk shit about my boss, but I think the YouTube algorithm is very selective in what they push. You know, my videos just aren't what what's being pushed. That's just what simply what it is. And on top of that, I haven't been consistent in like two, like literally since I started getting subscribers, I like stopped being consistent and I haven't had a consistent upload schedule. But as you guys know, I'm uploading more. So I'm trying to change that because I am great. To answer your assumption, does it bother me? Not really. It used to a lot. Like I used to bitch online a lot. I had some friends being like, cut that shit out. That is really tacky. That's really tacky to do that. So it is what it is. You actually don't like to play video games and you push out gaming videos because there's nothing left. 
For a moment there, yes, that assumption is actually tr was true. I actually really do like gaming now, as you guys know. I really want to start a gaming channel, but I was like, you know what? Let's let's take a step back, KK. Let's take a step back. Let's get your main channel going first. Like, I think for a minute, I thought gaming was popular, so I had to do it. I think the. <laughs> Who has a home phone? You're constantly stressed about money. I would say that's true because in the last year and a half, I thought I had to expend myself to the point of reaching max amount of dollars made. Did that make sense? Like I felt like I had to try my hardest to make the, the most amount of money in the least amount of time. And if that isn't capitalism, bitch, baby, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. That is what we are, as Americans, we are wired to think that way, which is really fucked up um, and I think America is so is so horny for like like boss babes, bitch moves, like making money moves where to the point of like you're sick from exhaustion, you know? So I'm trying to like sort of recalibrate my mind to think, okay, how can I actually be productive but also not break myself in half? So yeah, so we're 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 constantly growing. Okay. You hate the show Friends, yes. You pretend to be stupid to appeal to more people, but in reality, you're smart as fuck. Yeah! Growing up, yes, I thought I had to be really stupid and silly and like dumb to get laughs and be and, and stuff like that, but I've also found that I don't have to like, what's the word? <laughs> what's the word? Ooh, I'm gonna figure it out. I will figure out the word. Dilute. Is that the word? Dilute? I've always felt like I had to dilute my personality and my brain in order to make it easier for people to respond to me or just for other people. You know, deep down, Waffle is just a gross, crusty, stained white dog. Oh my God. If you don't know, I have a dog named Waffle and he is, and you know what it is? It's TikTok. There's like this joke to joke going around where people on TikTok make fun of the crusty small white dogs. Like there's, they're like, they're always named Princess or Bella and they always have crusty eyes. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, he does have crusty eyes. He produces more tears than the average dog, all right? And he smells and his breath is disgusting and his teeth are rotting. I assume that you don't ever want to have kids. I have never really had like a motherly instinct. Even as I grow older, I'm like, you know, I also like hear that it's like, sometimes you have to meet the right person, all that stuff. Sometimes you don't, I don't know. I don't really want kids at this point, but that could easily change. Your YouTube channel is dying. Oh, yes. Okay, so for the longest time, I did think my YouTube channel was dying and I thought there's nowhere to go. I'm going downhill. I'm losing so many subscribers every day. What's going on? People hate my videos, but then I sort of, started to reframe it into the idea of like, what could I do to make that not happen? My number one priority was making money by doing editing jobs for other people. But then also that wasn't really satisfying because I was getting severely underpaid. My rates were not high enough to be sustainable. And it was a case of I was working harder and not smarter. I'm also starting to work on my own channel to prevent it from not dying. Ooh, someone said you regret your nose job. So if you didn't know, in 2017, I think I was 20 year, 19 or 20 years old, um, I got a nose job. So I'll show you like a before picture. For the longest time, I did regret it. I wanna say between like six months and a year after I got the nose job was the worst time in my life mentally. I was so hyper aware of how I looked. It's honestly so embarrassing how many pictures of my nose I took, how many videos of like different angles. I would literally just like, like my phone would constantly be like in my face trying to get angles to see if it looked how I thought it looked. And then I had this really weird perception of what I looked like and it was so bad. I would constantly ask people if my nose looked funny. Now that I'm 24 and it's been four or five years, I wanna say I don't regret it. I think it was the right decision because aesthetically I like the way it looks. Back when I was 20, I wanted a small white girl nose and I didn't get that. Like the surgeon was like, I'm not gonna do that because you have a beautiful ethnic face and a little small button nose would not fit that. And at the time I was so like fucked up in the head and had such bad body dysmorphia that I couldn't wrap my brain around why he didn't do that. But now I'm like, I love my nose. I like my ethnic features. The only issue is I still can't breathe. Like I also had like a, a huge sinus part of the surgery and I still can't breathe. And that is common. A lot of people have to get 
multiple sinus surgeries. So that is probably going to be in my future because I'm at the point where I'm starting to get angry and frustrated at it. Yeah, because I just want to be able to breathe now. Please. Please. You are gay. Ooh, someone said your mom is more supportive than your dad. So my dad's an immigrant and he sort of has like the work, 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 never really stop, like keep going mentality. It's not that he's unsupportive. It's just, he's like, whatever you want to do, you got it. Like that's how it is. And if you have a foreign parent, you know that that's how they are. Like it's not really about the details. <laughs> I would say it's more about if you're happy, great, you know? Ooh, this is a really good question that I have not talked about in a while. Do you ever wish you never stopped doing YouTube because you would have had opportunities like Ricky Dillon and Trevi Moran? If you guys didn't know, I used to make YouTube videos a really long time ago. I was friends with Trevi, Ricky, not to name drop. I was friends with a bunch of different people that either gained millions of followers or like, did it and then like went like the college route and stuff. And for the longest time, yes, I was like, this is so stupid. I regret doing it because I would look at all the friends that I had and they would just, they were like moved out to LA. Yes, for a moment I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, why did I stop doing something I loved? And like, I really was hard on myself for a while, but honestly, who cares? Like I'm here now and that's all that matters. Anyways, I reconnected with Ricky though and I'm glad I did. Hi Ricky. Hi Ricky, hi Ricky. Okay, if you could, you would bite your toenails, listen. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap this up into one, but two people said you only went to college to show others that you were smart and to prove something to your parents and you regret not getting a degree. So that first one was 100% true. I literally went to college because I, Thought that's what you were supposed to do. All my friends were doing it. My parents told me it was the right thing to do. And that is literally why I wasted my time in college. Yes, so that's true. Do I regret not getting my degree? Absolutely not. I think it was the best decision for me I've ever made in my life. It literally saved my life. I was so fucking miserable in school. Um, will I ever get a degree? Let's be real, probably not. I don't wanna, I don't want to. I just don't want to and I don't need to. Um, thank you. You get emotionally attached easily. Okay, this, yes. When I was younger, I used to attach myself to people that gave me any sort of attention, like an ounce of attention. I would attach myself to them and then become obsessed with them. And that was really, un <laughs> that's so unhealthy and not good. But then I got older, started once again, seeking therapy, realizing my worth realizing that I don't need to do that in order for people to like me. I don't need to um, suck the teat of everyone who comes into my life. That happens a lot when you are really insecure and you don't know your place in life. So you just sort of clutch to the nearest person. You can't go to the toilet without your phone. Shut up. Ooh, someone said you want more surgery. Um, hmm. I definitely want to get my, the inside of my nose fixed, maybe a lift. No, yeah, maybe a lip, maybe just like a, eh, like a, maybe I want a little bit bigger lips. Like I already have like a, a good size. I already have like great lips, but I want maybe them to be a little bigger. Ooh, even though you're an amazing editor and could possibly analyze film in the most nuanced and interesting ways, you're not a film buff, nor do you care to be one. <laughs> so specific. Um, so I, when I was, you know, I was majoring in film. So it's like, I, you sort of had to be a film buff in order to take the classes. Cause it was just like, just like talking about film to no, to no end. Yeah, I really do love talking about films and analyzing them and, you know, seeking out different meanings. Like using a film technique, like a camera technique in order to portray different meaning, like that's so cool to me. You're like using color, um, using editing to portray a meaning. And I think that's what I also do too. Like. I, when I edit videos for myself, other creators, like editing and color and the way that the camera is set up can all be used to say a big broad message or a really small message. And I think that's really cool. I think it's really cool. Like the techniques that are used. Thank you. You want your channel to blow up, but are secretly very afraid of it. Yes, yes, of course. Like obviously I wanna have success. I wanna make money online doing something I love and I've loved for so long. But yeah, that scares the shit out of me. We saw what happened to Miss Charlie. 
she did one thing and then everyone's fucking done with her. Like, you are not religious. That is true, I am not. I grew up going to the Catholic church. Um, church was a very big part of my life and now I'm an atheist. <laughs> I feel like that happens a lot to people who practice Catholicism growing up, you know, just, don't really care for it it's not i have and also i just want to say i have nothing against people who are part of organized religion i think if anything i'm jealous like i wish i could like clutch to a belief but i just i'm not like i just can't convince myself that i want to you know so if you do believe in god or if you are a part of an organized religion i think that's awesome more power to you yes you have a lot of neurodivergent energy um okay so I've actually like never really talked about this and only because I've never, I just wanna go ahead and say, I've never had like a official diagnosis or anything, but I definitely have a lot of neurodivergent behavior that was a little bit unexplainable. Like I didn't know what it was growing up and I never really told anyone about it until honestly, recently, honestly, it was TikTok. I would like go on TikTok and people would be like, you know, TikTok is such a crazy place because people go on there and talk about like their their behaviors and their like quirks. And someone's like, does anyone know what this is? And like, if you read through the comments, people will be like, oh, it's this. Oh, I have this, this, like I can relate to this. And so I would start seeing that like pop up on my For You page and I'm like, hmm. So I started doing some research i stem a lot and i never really know knew what that meant i just thought i got excited sometimes like oh my god this is like kind of what to talk about because i've never really talked about it but i found out what what stemming was and i do it all the time i have like sensory issues sometimes and once again i've never had an official diagnosis so i could be wrong but i definitely do stem i stem a lot when i get overstimulated i do have like stimulation issues where i would i sometimes get overstimulated and then i like stem really hard and who knows i don't know i don't think i'll ever get an official diagnosis um only because it is what it is like if i am i don't care it's just who i am sometimes you edit for clients and wonder how they got so popular <laughs> <laughs> also i don't understand why i'm getting so do i just do i just give off virgin energy people i got like a thousand people saying you're a virgin he he like fuck right off fuck off please i think that's all i'm going to answer today thank you so much if you gave me an assumption i appreciate all of the slander all the virgin and smelly slander. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, Y'all know exactly where to hit right in the jugular. All right, guys, make sure to smash that mother from life button. Life button? Okay, guys, make sure to smash that mother from life button in the comment down below. Thanks and goodbye.